Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. Today is going to be cold. It's not going to be too windy. The, the wind's going to come out of the northwest at six miles per hour. Perfect day to vertical fish. One of my favorite ways to catch crappie, well, is by long poling. I'm an old timer. I call it long poling. Uh, what we have right here is a Bucks graphite jig pole, and this is a Sam's Super Sensitive. Uh, one is 10 feet, and the other is a little over 9 feet. And I'm just going to use a uh, Mitchell 308 on this Sam's, and this is a cadence on the other, loaded with braid. Six pound test braid. And this is loaded with four pound test, Mr. Crappie. A vertical presentation, well, cannot be beat, in my opinion, when it comes to crappie, when the water is just about froze. Come with me. Put your long handles on and freeze with me. Let's stick a few fish. Yes! Oh, ho! Alright folks, let's get busy right here. Right now, the surface temperature is at 44 degrees. And I've noticed that this water is a little bit cloudy, so I'm going to start off with a chartreuse and gold hair jig. Now this, this jig head right here is a 132nd ounce. It has a size 6 sickle hook, which is being up just a little too much. Okay, that's a lot better. And I have it tied with a loop knot, four pound test Mr. Crappie, and this is a Sam's super sensitive jig pole. And it's, uh, I believe it's 10 feet long or nine foot three, light as a feather. And what we got right here is a Garcia Mitchell 308, high vis line, four pound test. So let's get on in here and see what we can do. Now the main thing about crappie fishing especially a vertical presentation is to really pay attention to what's going on out here i want to find out how deep the fish are when i catch a fish i want to see how aggressive that fish bit and and of course like i said how deep he is i'm concerned with the depth right now now we're off of a little creek right here and i'm sitting in about 12 feet of water right now so we're going to ease in here real slow, not to disturb them, and see what we can do. See the shad right there? It is full of shad right there on the bottom. Okay. They're about four to five feet from the bottom. So I'm going to lower this jig down there to about that depth and I said about we got to figure this thing out right here and I, so the best way to do that is keep that bait in there where the shad is and when the water's cloudy like this I want to mention this fact golden chartreuse is a great color there's another one right there let's see that's a, look here, a little bitty crappie. He ain't very big at all. Now it's on. I know exactly how deep that fish bit. And this color right here is perfect for this clarity of water. Now it's on. There we go. There we go. There's that bigger fish we was talking about. Right there. Now I know what I was doing wrong. All right, let's flip him on in here. That's a white cropping. Okay. 
pretty nice little white crappie. Let's let him go. There he goes. Maybe. Shook his head. He's mad at me. Now, the reason why I'm catching these fish, that's a highly visible jig. 132nd, it falls very slow. I can control it easy. I'm going to put it right back in there where I caught that fish, which is right there. I'm going to slap my rod and let that jig follow. Every once in a while, I'll give it a little action. Look at my rod tip right here. Just a little bit. Bounce it just a little bit and then go ahead and catch that fish. That is how easy crappie fishing is. Um, it, once you develop a touch for it, you got it. And long poling, well, oftentimes is the answer. Let's let him go. Little black one. I get a lot of questions. Um, why do you favor a 132nd of an ounce jig more than you do, say, a 16th? Well, I'm going to tell you, the versatility of a 132nd ounce jig is this. It falls at the right speed just about. This is a pretty good fish right here. Any water temperature. And that's an opinion, but I bet you I'm pretty well right. There's another crappie. It's a white crappie. Man, that, that fish right there is, is pretty. Cannot beat it. I'm talking about, whoa, Bursal. Oh, Bursal. He's got old long feet and yellow toenails. Let's let him go. Hey, man. Whoa! That's one of the things that you really have to pay attention to. After I caught a few fish right there where the fish were, right there on them two posts, it spooked the shad and they come this way. Well, the crappie followed. Oh, that was a good crappie. But I wanted to show y'all that. By catching those fish uh, crappie in amongst those shad, the, the shad will spook. They'll move. And the crappie will move with them. So you have to keep that in mind. That's why all of a sudden they quit biting. You'll say, oh, why'd they quit biting? Well, by them crappie fighting... Those are small ones I'm missing, folks. Fighting in amongst that school of shad, the shad's going to move a little bit. That's the point I'm trying to get at. So I'm having to keep up with where those shad are. Right there. And there he is. You see? So that's how important it is to follow the shad. It don't matter... If you're on the edge of a creek channel out in the middle of the lake or fishing like I'm doing right here on the edge of a creek, same difference. There's no difference. I keep, uh, that's why I keep saying if they ain't no shad present, don't fish. Don't waste your time. Let's throw him back. All right, let's talk about setting the hook. On a jig pole, in my opinion, there's only one way to really set the hook. And that is straight up, folks. And I'm gonna demonstrate that just right, right here in just a second. There he is. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a Jim Dandy. Let's see if we can flip him in. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, a straight up hook set. See where that hook is? There's no way a crappie would come off like that. A straight up hook set's the best, in my opinion. Let's let him go. 
everything I say is based on opinion. There, nobody knows everything. There he goes. Whew. Hey, man, look at the bird. The bearded bird. Doggone it. Whoa. There we go. I'm glad I caught this crappie here. That's I've spent a little time right here, folks. Come on back here. To show a point of what I do out here and what I've discovered. Now, I was catching my crappie right here on deeper docks. Now look at this. This is a four, five foot dock. The fish was around two and a half to three feet deep. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Let's let him go. Go on back. You just cannot say, well, they're here, they're there, they're gonna be there, you can forget about it. You don't never know. So you gotta be versatile enough to, to keep an open mind about what you need to do. Now this may not be the dominating depth, but there's crappie here. So what? that's why, why I'm saying there's a lot of different things these crappie do, a lot of different depths. Uh, that they can be at. <laughs> you just have to be open-minded and be willing to try different things. And a lot of times you'll come up on situations where you're catching fish where Mo says, ah, oh, there ain't no fish in there. <laughs> they move a lot. Crappie constantly moves. A lot of water out here for them to move in. They could be most anywhere. Now, let's see if there's one right here. Yep. See that, folks? This is a four-foot dock. Cold water temps. A long ways away from the creek. And there's a white crappie. Let's let it go. There we go. Where are you going? That's a good one. Dang, I can't tell y'all how much this fish is fighting, folks. Come on in here. Yeah, that's a pretty good one right there. I'm alternating right now between deep docks and uh, shallow docks and I'm not getting as many bites on the shallow docks but when I do get a bite it seems like it's a, a little better fish to be honest let's let him go right there <laughs> whoa oh whoa what's your name sir Maurice Mo, H -O -E -T. and what's your nickname Big Mo Big Mo, and, and folks, that's accurate. He's as big as Muhammad Ali, I guarantee you're bigger. <laughs> He's six foot three, is that right? That's right. Big man, loves to crappie fish, but now the main thing is you served in the military. That's correct. And what branch? Army. Army. Infantry. Infantry. <laughs> you, <laughs> I like that. So, um, well today, we're going crappie fishing. I want to give a shout out to all veterans, which we do on this channel quite a bit. Uh, Y'all mean a lot to us. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. Jig poling, long poling, whatever you want to call it. It's a great technique. Um, it works. I think exceptionally well, a lot better in the winter time. 
it's a presentation that you can just well keep it right in front of his face he has no other recourse but to hit it if you tease him enough i want to say god bless each and every one of y'all thank you for all the great comments everything you do for this channel and Whoa. Hey, hey, whoa. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food.